you you've been you've been that stone that's paid it forward and we're feeling it today with the way we're touched in this conversation thank you so much alan oh you're welcome mark thanks i love working with you well first of all mark it's great to be with you and i've been a fan of of yours uh, and all of our uh, joint friends uh, for a long time and get a chance to uh, do this with you today is, is a real privilege for me this entire framework so transformational for me personally and for anyone else that I've met who's allowed it to permeate and give a sense of safety to the entire organization. I'm always thinking about why does this work so well? And you, you really hit it with the fact that now I'm, I'm trusting Alan. I'm trusting the executive who's leading this and making it feel as though it was not only safe for me to speak up, but necessary. Oh, Mark, that's, that's so well said, because that's what's going to make us successful. When I have been exploring the many different ways that people have been influenced by your work and, uh, and this working together. Yes. Concept, and the fact that you now have so many decades having helped people through the process of arriving in a place to make that decision and have a seat at the table for the multi-billion dollar contract. Could you talk about this process of succession planning and, and maybe some of the leading insights that you might offer people who are listening today who are either now knocking on the C-suite's door to start to, their first journey there or maybe curated as a part of a process to, to get in the corner office? Well, absolutely. This is so important, what you're raising. And I'd like to uh, back up a little bit and make it bigger than succession planning. And what I mean by that is, is that remember that one of the biggest parts about working together is this continuous improvement. Because for you to... Uh, make a projection of profits over the next five years, 10 years, whatever, near term and long term. Well, it's going to take continuous improvement, both on the revenue side and on the margin side, because revenue times margin equals profits. And most good companies will increase their revenue by five to seven percent a year by making products and services that people want and value. And they'll work on the efficiency side, the quality and efficiency side on the margins. And 1.07 times 1.07 is 1.15. And so the, the profits will move 15% a year, compounding the growth rate, and the stock price will follow. And all of the shareholders, all of the stakeholders, everybody is going to be happy. And you you created a viable, growing company. And so uh, when it comes to every member of the team, every member of the team has their personal continuous improvement plan for them as a leader or as a participant and both individually and also actions that are taken to improve the teamwork capability. And we've used over the years, even before I knew what it was, we used Marshall's uh, Stakeholder Center Coaching. Yes. And we used uh, Stakeholder Center Leadership, where you included all the stakeholders, and then every member, uh, with the help of all your colleagues, helping you identify areas where you could improve on your behaviors or your competencies that would help yourself and the team be even more um, um, viable going forward. And, and so it just fits with the whole business. You're, you're improving, the business is improving, personally improving, teamwork's improving. So now you think about succession plan. It's not about picking one or two people to succeed uh, being the CEO. This is about a broad improvement plan of the entire leadership team, or some people call the C-suite. Um, but it's all, all the way down through the organization too, because you want an organization where everybody is improving their competencies and their skills and these behaviors. And so uh, the most important thing is, is to have that plan in place, continually improving it each year. Everybody's helping you because they know the areas that you're improving because you've told them, you know, following stakeholder center coaching, and they've helped you decide. You got to decide that you got to decide the two or three you're going to work on. And, and then over time, you're, you're building this very robust, broad set of, of leaders. And so then next thing is, is make sure that you keep looking for the opportunities. One is education. The other one is your personal development, your teamwork development, but then your experiences. So then you move the people around 
So they had the experience. So the time that you get to the place where you're being considered for the C-suite or any position in the organization, the C-suite or the CEO, because remember, the CEO's unique responsibility is to have a profitable growth plan and be delivered on that. And remember the board's job, they only have two assignments as a board. One is, is to hold the CEO accountable for a, a profitable growth plan. And the other one is select the CEO. And usually the two are very tightly controllable and, and relatable. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so you think about it now that everybody is working on the same objectives and it all goes back to that compelling vision of the company. So everybody knows where you're going, how we're getting there, and you and they know personally what you're doing to contribute to that and how are you doing continuously improving your skills. So it takes succession planning to not a, a unique uh, event. It takes it to this is part of the strategy of managing this organization for the good of the individuals uh, and all the, all the stakeholders in addition to the greater good.